If you love liberty, declare your independence by signing the Shire Society Declaration at ShireSociety.com. Right, I'm going to open the public hearing on House Bill 470, and the chair calls Representative Michael Yakubovic. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. I'm Michael Lickbush from Cookset, representing uh, District 924, talking about the cryptocurrency bill for us. Uh, uh, I'm a computer engineer by trade and by education. I've been doing telecom development for over two decades. Things like protocols and networks and security are very familiar to me. And I'm here to talk about this new technology. Start a new technology known as Bitcoin. It's a cryptocurrency that has just turned 10 years old. Um, it's probably known to everybody. It's very advanced technology underneath, but at the consumer level, it's boring. It's a payment system, just a PayPal with a credit card. Um, with every passing day, it gets stronger, more secure. Um, it's value, it's money, it's not going away, it's going to be here. People will learn about it more and more. Um, I want the state of New Hampshire to be on the forefront of this amazing technology, to be able to accept fees and payments in it, just like they can do today maybe with PayPal and credit cards. There are many service providers of payment systems that can convert it to dollars, that take care of volatility, that take care of all the technological issues again. It's quite boring at the consumer level. You press a button, you send it goes there, it doesn't stop. You can do it for 10 years, 24-7, there's no downtime. Um, well, my friends are going to talk more about it, but that's my pitch, because um, there's a, a short proverb in Russian that says, if somebody wants to give you something, usually it's money. What are four minutes you should take it? Thank you. Any questions? Well, Can you take questions? No. Okay. All right, thank you. Chair calls Representative Dennis Acton, sponsor of the legislation. Uh, thank you, Chairman and members of the uh, committee. <coughs> uh, for the record, my name is Dennis Acton. I'm a representative from Rockingham District 10, the uh, town of Fremont. And I'm also a uh, what is known as a blockchain project developer. And um, so what I'd like to do, I am the prime sponsor of this bill, so I wanted to explain to you why we even want to do this. The, the text of this bill was submitted in 2016, pretty much the same, uh, the, the exact word. So we uh, worked with OLS to, to resubmit this. And we want to try again now because things have changed in the industry in the last three years. Uh, basically, uh, th there was somewhat of a Wild West kind of a situation going on with the advent of, of Bitcoin and of blockchain technologies. Uh, in the last two years, the Security and Exchange Commission and the IRS have come in and cleaned up the entire industry. Uh, almost uh, all of the projects have been have been audited, and and there's been um, the SEC has gone through and, and really kind of transformed it from a wild west to a corporate situation where uh, the projects are really starting to um, take shape and. and move forward. Uh, now as a technology guy, I, I, in years past, I, I took part in the in the dot-com boom right here in, in New Hampshire in 98-99. It was a real boom in, in New Hampshire. There was a lot of um, uh, startups. Uh, I was down on the seacoast and there was a lot of new companies. It was a great place to get a job. That's going to be happening again in the next couple of years with blockchain technology and, and with uh, cryptocurrencies. So we're at the forefront now. We have an opportunity to create an environment in New Hampshire where we want to attract these startups to come in. Um, and we have the ability to do that by taking small steps to make the atmosphere more friendly here in the state. And so this uh, bill here is, is another step in that direction. Now, um, as far as, uh, I, I don't want to go into explaining cryptocurrency and stuff like that, it, because ultimately the, the state won't have to touch them. The, the companies themselves will, will use a third-party processor, in this case, um, BitPay, and I know people will explain more about BitPay. The company pays in, in cryptocurrency to the third-party processor. Then that third-party processor, within 24 hours, converts to cash and then makes an ACH deposit to the state, 100%. There's no, there's no fees. Any fees are paid by the taxpayer. 
So the state gets in cash the entire tax bill. There's nothing taken out of that. So that's, and the state doesn't have to deal with the, the um, different, you know, the price fluctuations and so forth that we've seen in cryptocurrency. So that's the, um, one of the, the key aspects of this. So if we can just um, certainly take a look at this and, and uh, I wish I had, had more time to work with the treasurer because I, I see in our fiscal note they have some concerns and so forth. But I think a lot of those have been have been alleviated in, in, with the developments over the last couple of years, and, and I hope we can move forward uh, with this uh, legislation. Questions? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for coming today to testify before us. Thank you. Um, can you tell me, please, what the demand for such a program is in New Hampshire now, and what it would be in five years from now? Okay. Um, the the, the demand is, is low right now because we don't have that many uh, cryptocurrency or, or high-tech companies that are using cryptocurrency. I know there's some, and we have some businessmen here that will testify. Um, what we're trying to do is attract more companies in. Now, let me give you an example. Uh, why, the state of Wyoming changed some of their, their um, laws last year, and that, that prompted a company from from um, based in Hong Kong, a company called Input Output Hong Kong, to announce that they're moving their headquarters to Cheyenne, Wyoming, uh, 250 jobs, many of them six-figure programmers. Now here in New Hampshire, we have a, a huge base of talent, far more than Wyoming has. Uh, the problem is here is that everyone gets up and drives to, to Boston to find a place to work, or they telecommute out to the world to, to work. Just, <clears throat> we want to create the situation where companies will want to locate here it based their, their companies, their payrolls out of New Hampshire. And they may hire people from around the world as well, but they'll be based in New Hampshire, and that will help build our high-tech base here. So in five years, I think we're going to see another boom similar to what we saw in 98, 99 with, with the dot-com expansion that was so successful here in the state. So somebody needs to explain Bitcoin to me and why we need it because uh, to me it's like in thin air and and yeah i'm a dinosaur i get it okay <laughs> uh, let me give you the, the elevator explanation yep, of bitcoin. Uh, bitcoin is a, uh, a a digital representation of value so it's basically electronic money and it's used uh to transfer value over the internet and um to settle transactions um, there's a variety of, of types of, of cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin is just one of them. But um, it allows uh, companies to do commerce and to trade. Now, let me give you an example. Um, I'm involved in a project uh, down in Haiti to, to create an a, um, electronic medical record system on the Internet. So we've decided to use a, a blockchain technology, which is basically just a, the next generation of database technologies. We're going to store the information in the blockchain up on the internet so that it's accessible to anyone who has an internet access. And, and um, that's, that's um, a project that it, at the very base of it is uh, cryptocurrency related as far as settling transactions, transferring money, um, and, and so forth. So that's, that's basically how it's going to work now. Another aspect, as far as with Haiti goes, is that people, we've heard of remittances of people who live in, in the United States and send money back to their relatives in Haiti. Um, cryptocurrencies is, is going to be taking over that business. So uh, right now, if I want to send money to, to someone in Haiti, I use Western Union, and they, char they charge me 10%. In two or three years, I'll be able to use a cryptocurrency service that will cost me 25 cents. So that it's the next generation of money transfer. And like I said, it's been audited and the IRS accepts it now. I, if I get paid in Bitcoin, I have to claim it um, as, a, you know, as income through the IRS or else I'm in violation of, of the tax laws. Oh, you betcha. <laughs> <laughs> so I have money sitting in my bank account. I can send that if I want to. And my cash comes from the U.S. It's been backed by gold or whatever it is, right? Where does Bitcoin initiate from? Where does that value come from? Where 
do you take cash and convert it into Bitcoin and then Bitcoin comes back out and, and into cash? Um, in essence, the, the system behind Bitcoin is, is the value of it. There's uh, over, now uh, the blockchain behind Bitcoin is, is 100,000, a, a mesh network of 100,000 nodes or servers that all share the same data. So you can't hack it, you can try to change it here and, and, if, and the rest of the computer notice that and shut it down so you can't, you can't hack it. So the, the, that structure, that system that creates the space, the, the blocks to save that data in is the value. And uh, it's, it's a little fuzzy at first, but it, um, little? <laughs> it, but it's, it is re it's, it's reaching, um, it's, it's starting to reach mass adoption out there. And, and, it's, and then we'll see that in the next couple of years, it's gonna really start to expand. All right, maybe we'll talk later. Okay. <laughs> no problem, I, I, otherwise we'll be here all day. Took me a while to get it. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, I know the IRS tracks transactions of ten thousand dollars or more. Is how is that done through Bitcoin? Is that is it a way to avoid the, the, the IRS oversight? I mean, would the state be getting involved in something that could could eventually end up being sketchy? No, uh, not at all. Because the uh, well, the the IRS now is is regulating the cryptocurrency industry, so they're they're subject to the same rules as anyone else tra transferring money. Um, the that's that's one thing. Um, beyond that, and, and there's a, there's guys behind me that can can um, explain this better than I can. Okay. But um, it's it's important to remember that even though there were some wild west times where people thought they could use Bitcoin to avoid. Uh, you know, to send money back and forth, they thought it was an honestly. It's actually not, and now it, you would be in violation of tax laws if you if you um, transact money and don't uh, it, it, if you receive it as income and you don't um, and you don't claim it as, as income, then it will come after you. Okay. Follow. Up? Thank you. Um, so my my next question is, I mean, I, I think you've explained why it would be advantageous to the state to do it. Explain to me why it's advantageous for a company or a person to do it rather than just cash. Okay, so let me give an example. When I'm doing my work on my project in Haiti, I get paid in Bitcoin or Ethereum or, or various cryptocurrencies based on who I'm working for. Uh, I, I take that crypt cryptocurrency, I save it in, in a, my own digital wallet. I save that locally. I tend not to keep it up on the exchanges. There's um, The exchanges are where, uh, are where you're more likely to get hacked, uh, people can steal your password and so forth, and, and so I keep that on a local hardware wallet. It, I can download the the keys that encrypt my my cryptocurrency onto a local hardware wallet. Now, okay, so I have that stored locally. How do I get to cash? Well, that that would take if I wanted to pay my taxes in cash, I would have to um, transfer my my cryptocurrencies to the exchange, and then. From there, transfer it to cash. Now, when you exit from the crypto uh, cryptocurrency world to cash, is where you get the biggest uh, fees. When when you're exiting out, you go into cash, you're going to pay, and it's upwards of nine percent. And so, I would get hit with a large fee just to get my money to cash to pay to the state. Now, with with say BitPay, which is what the state of Ohio is using now to receive payments. Um, I would just do a one-to-one -one transfer. I would transfer my Bitcoin to BitPay. They would transfer that to cash and then pay the state. They charge me 1% and they pay the state in full within 24 hours. If the price happens to drop overnight, BitPay is responsible for that. So the, the state will not lose money. I, the state gets 100% of the bill and never has to touch the crypto at all. There's no issue of, oh, it just lost 20% overnight. We're not getting our full tax money. That won't happen. BitPay, uh, absorbs that, or I absorb that. If it dumps the night before, I go to send it to BitPay. So that that's our risk, not the state's. Thank you. So, really, the state isn't. You're not asking the state to accept Bitcoin per se. You're asking the state to be willing to do business with a company that transacts in Bitcoin. Yes. Yeah, so would be basically what we're doing. Um, and I agree that would be untenable for the state to to get into crypto um, directly. Uh, we're, we're asking to set up an ACH, in, an incoming ACH account that works with uh, these reputable, there's a variety of BitPay, um, Microsoft uses BitPay, I can use Bitcoin to buy software through BitPay 
to Microsoft. So they, it's, and there's other companies all starting to come onto that because they realize that technology guys like me are getting paid in Bitcoin and Ethereum and, and, and so forth, and they want to facilitate that. And right now, being first to, to the industry, the fees are low, we, we have good negotiating power. At some point, all the states are going to want to be doing this. But we have a chance to get in early and negotiate um, and, you know, with the, and get the best um, third-party processes working for us. And then I, I personally am going to go out there and try to attract high-tech companies to come to New Hampshire. And, and I hope I'm successful doing that. We need the jobs. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chair. So how different is this from speculating with gold and silver? Well, I suppose if I had um, a gold, if I had holdings of gold, um, I could I, I could sell those on the market and then and just pay my taxes. That's that's basically the same thing. If I happen to have an inheritance of gold or, or, or for some reason had gold coins, and um, I would I would sell them and, and possibly face the same um, fees and, and so forth of going through that. Um, the big thing is that is the having a um, that company in the in between the payment processor is is the crucial part of that. Now, if there was a if there was a demand for paying in, in gold and silver, then we would probably move to to um, create a payment processor that would accept that. Ultimately, from the state's angle, it's just money coming in from a different ACA, so it's coming into the banking system. ACH is a, a bank, a well-known bank transfer system. So it's just making it easier for the companies to facilitate using their their assets to pay taxes. Follow-up, please? Follow-up? Yes. And what are the counterparty risks involved in? Can you say that again? The counterparty risks, the counterparty side, what are the risks involved there? Uh, counterparty is in um, risks to the the, the payer the, mm -hmm. to the no to the for, for the payee. Oh, okay. So as far as the payee side, well, uh, BitPay um, accepts those risks. They they do the uh, well, so as the KYC, the Know Your Customer mm -hmm. requirements for for the SEC. Um, so myself as a as a technology guy who wants to sell, I have to create an account with BitPay. And they verify me and, and, and I and go through the know your customer steps where they need several forms of ID. I got to send my license, a picture of my passport. They verify that I'm real. And then they will do business with me. The state doesn't have to do that because, because the third party processor does all, all of the, um, the vetting of, of the, uh, the payees. Mm -hmm. So the risk is, is, has been virtually eliminated from. Um, so no one can, if, if an. If an um, a corrupt character decides to try to pay, BitPay is the one that's held liable to, because they're the one transacting in Bitcoin, so the SEC would go after BitPay, not after the state. Thank you. Representative McGuire. Yes, thank you. Uh, if I'm understanding you correctly, the bill, it's an old, the wording is old, and, you don't, and what you really want to do is to have the state make an arrangement with someone so that people can Pay, pay in dollars funded by Bitcoin with someone else taking the, the transaction risk. That's true. And I wish I had time, uh, you know, new, uh, as a state record, I wish I had time to go through this. Um, OLS really wanted to just stick with, you know, something that had already been done. I haven't had the time to, to work up an amendment, but that, that is what we're trying to do. And I, I wasn't, had this is kind of a you shall do this, you shall do that, uh, kind of a, and that's not my style, really. I'd rather work uh, cooperatively with the treasurer to, to develop the system. I just didn't have the time, and, and I thought I will on uh, moving forward. Who's our merchant? Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> so I, as we do this, are you asking for the state to accept cryptocurrency and develop a plan, or are we looking to create a study commission to then create no, the study commission was already created in a separate piece of legislation, so that's already uh, that needs to be reconstituted. Because some of the people were on that lost, so I, I'm going to I'm going to try to get that going again. But we this is actually to, to create the system to allow the, these uh, payments. Oh, on the uh, study commission, where is that available online? The results of it. 
Well, they were supposed to report in November. Um, I didn't. I haven't seen if that was done yet because some some people, at least one person lost. Um, Representative Hunt, I believe, is running that. Um, not Hunt. Uh, I, I'm gonna have to get more information on, on exactly, but there there is a commission that was supposed to have reported on November 1st. I don't know if that's taken place or not. Of last year. Of last year, yes. Thank you. Representative Judy. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Representative, for your service, Haiti. Thank you. Uh, since when the United States start using the Bitcoins? Uh, Bitcoin was created in 2011, and it was um, kind of just out there a little bit. It was it was forward-thinking computer guys basically doing it, and and then it slowly but surely caught on. And it's, it's so over the years, it's it's developed and, and grown, and it's had its ups and downs. It's been it's peaked and then crashed a, a number of times. Uh, most notably last year, where we're shot up, and that's where everybody was talking about Bitcoin last year, last December. But then it it came back down, and now <coughs> with the government um, involvement and regulation, it's starting. It's stabilizing and becoming a. Um, a it's mass adopted, and we found out recently that Fidelity is is looking at allowing. Um, their, their investors to buy Bitcoin and add that to, to portfolios, uh, Morgan Stanley. Uh, so it's starting to work its way in, into mass adoption within the um, securities and, and banking area. But once again, it's, it's, um, we're at the forefront of that right now, and, um, but it is going to happen, so. Um, okay. oh. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. So how many states start using it right now? Uh, right now, Ohio is accepting cryptocurrency in this exact system. They use BitPay as their um, as their payment processor. I know New York City, uh, and there's a variety of other states that are in the process. Uh, I mean, New York State uh, is in the process of <coughs> looking to um, move into this, uh, allowing this, and in, in becoming more friendly in general to blockchain companies and to cryptocurrencies specifically. So there is a movement that's happening um, in, in a variety of states, and there may be more people to testify to that after me. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Uh, you described, if this bill is adopted, how you would uh, convert your pay, which I assume most that you get is through the uh, how you would pay your taxes and so forth. Uh, how do you do that now without this in effect, and how does that differ from? Well, right now, if I if I need, um, and I, you know, so I, I don't have, I, I'm not a big holder of cryptocurrencies right now. Um, the but right now I would have to um, move my money, move my cryptocurrencies to an exchange, and then sell it um, sell it on the open market to cash and then transfer that cash to my bank using ACH, and then either write a check or, or um, use my debit card to make a payment there. Oh. Uh -huh. And if, if this bill is adopted, how would you just be eliminating like one step? Or yes, I would be able to, um, well, when I, when I send the, the cryptos, cryptocurrency to the exchange and then sell it there, I'm subject to uh, a variety of limitations, a high fee, and then depending on how much it is, they tend to not, um, may pay uh, pay you in cash in small amounts. They don't, the industry doesn't like when you, they want to try to keep it in the crypto sphere. So when you go to cash, it's you're, you're cashing out, and, and that that's where you have the four to five, sometimes nine percent fees that you get. So you just want I, I just want to paying a higher percentage with with BitPay. It's only one percent that they charge in Ohio. They charge one percent to receive the crypto, sell it, and then pay, pay it to the payee. Representative Pearson. Representative, you, I have uh, maybe two questions here. The, you, you mentioned Ohio accepting cryptocurrencies. Does Ohio actually accept a cryptocurrency, or is it a, it's a conversion to U.S. dollars that the state of Ohio accepts? Yes, and they're the ones um, who have set up the the uh, system with BitPay as the third party payment processor. So um, the the pay the payor pays sends the crypto um, as required 
to cover the tax payment plus the bit pay one percent fee and any other transfer fees that, and then um, bit pay <coughs> within 24 hours converts it to cash and then and then pays uh, does an ACH transfer directly to the uh, Ohio treasurer's um, their incoming um, a payment account. Okay. So follow up that. So with the state of Ohio accepting payments in U.S. dollars as they've done since they became Ohio. Um, the language of the bill that's before us here, specifically at the very beginning, says the implementation plan for the state to accept cryptocurrencies. That, that to me does not read as an acceptance of cryptocurrencies translated into U.S. dollars. It's to accept cryptocurrencies as this is written. Is that the intent here? Because the language, what, what you're explaining and what I'm reading are not quite, to me, not quite the same. That, that wording, um, the, 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 there is no intent to have the state accepting Bitcoin payments. That's Correct. just, it's not, um, maybe in five to ten years that, that would be viable. Um, the intent is to use a third party processor, and I believe there's language in there about working uh, further down in there to working um, with, a, with the payment processor. So yes, I believe that that, that uh, wording um, would need to be amended um, if there's any issue of, of a, um, just to make sure that it's, it's not ambiguous, then, then uh, that should be amended before the um, exact session. Um, are there other companies that have this conversion capability other than BitPay? There's a, a variety of, of companies trying to move into that space because that's going to be um, the big thing is, is interfacing between cryptocurrency and, and, and U.S. dollars and, and euros throughout the world. There's going to be a period of time where um, the traditional markets and governments and companies want to have this person in the middle who it, it knows the industry, knows the regulations, is vetted and, and regulated by the Securities and Exchange Commission, and um, they, they're the ones who do all that legwork so that the, the governments receiving the payments don't have to do that. So that's, um, the, that's an interim period of probably the next five years until there's more of a integration and a stabilization uh, worldwide of, of cryptocurrencies. And recently, in Japan, this, their, their cryptocurrency, I could be saying this wrong, was hacked. And there was a loss of half a million, $500 million. Can you explain what happened there and how that wouldn't happen here? Yes, the, um, what, what gets hacked is the, the exchanges that store the cryptocurrency. So if somebody, you still always um, liable to, to, to some, um, doing some type of a, a virus on your computer that steals your passwords, and then somebody can get into your account and transfer the uh, cryptocurrencies away. Um, there's some of the smaller startup cryptocurrencies can be, in essence, hijacked uh, by, if 51% if of the nodes that, of, of that mesh network that run the, the, the blockchain, um, if you can get control of 51% of the computers, then you, you have consensus and you can, you can take over the, the, network, the, the network that runs the, the, um, the blockchain. Mm -hmm. and, um, but that's, that's only for the small, that only happens in the smaller startups before they get, they reach critical mass where they're untouchable. Let's say, like with Bitcoin or Ethereum, there's tens or, or up to 100,000 different computers. The, there's, it'd be virtually impossible to get control of, of the majority of those computers because it's all based on consensus. All the computers work together uh, to, uh, to verify each transaction. And um, if, if you can control the majority of the computers, then you can say, well, that bad, bad transaction of someone trying to steal the cryptocurrencies is actually really good. Don't worry about it. And, and then, then the theft occurs. But um, the effort that it would take to control 51% of of a blockchain of the major cryptocurrencies that that BitPay works with is is virtually impossible. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so I just want to clarify what I'm hearing. I mean, other than the, the risk of generally upsetting the dinosaurs among us, um, is there any risk at all to the state to get involved in this? Because it sounds to me like this is really just like it was when we started using credit cards. It's a number that represents cash somewhere. So all we're doing is, all you're asking us to do is ex just accept another <coughs> number that represents cash. And the state, no matter what happens, who gets hacked, we're still getting our money. And if, if the Bitcoin processor crashed overnight, we could just say, well, you still owe us our taxes. I mean, at the end of the day, there's no risk, is there? Exactly. That, that's, the, that's the issue. That's what Bit, BitPay, which has um, evolved into this system since the last time this bill was introduced, has, has brought to the table here, is that they take the risk. And so, yes, if I, if I send my tax payment up to BitPay and something happens, I still owe the money. It, I can't say, well, I sent it to BitPay. I did it lost. I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's, I still owe that. So the state... Um, the state just, when, when the ACH comes in and clears, it's a done deal. Until then, no matter what happens, I'm still liable for that, that money. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, in terms of the risk, is the processors, are they insured by any agency? If we, as a state, select this processor and there was some sort of issue, they went dark overnight, and um, is there anybody insuring that money other than the payer of the taxes well they're not they're not uh, insured in in the same way like the the FDIC would insure a bank mm -hmm. so they, they are a corporation um, they're, they're well funded and well established so that, so the the onus would be on us to, to choose the right one the most reputable the most um, stable the most established um, uh, payment system and right now BitPay is is the top one so it's a matter of looking at and seeing what their what their backing is, how stable they are, who who they're working with, and and I would assume, uh, of course, they they've also offered to come up and, and present as well as if we move forward, uh, so we can hear from to pay themselves, or or if we have we want to have a bidding process or something like that. But you know, I, I if Microsoft is working with them and and um, uh, Dish TV now you can make payments. So uh, looking at who's who else is working with them. You can see that the due diligence has, has been there, and that these guys should uh, should be trustable. They, I can't say for a hundred percent, but um, because they aren't, they don't have backing from central banks or anything like that. It's a corporation that um, that you have to um, fully vet. Thank you. So, feeling picking somebody that that appears to be reputable at the start, at the offset, if we fail to do that and the onus was on us to select that, what's to stop the taxpayer, if that should happen, from coming back to the state? Like, you chose this agency, I paid, it's not fair for you to say that that is on me because of the processor company that you as the state chose to use. That would have to be handled in the contract, uh, the, the contract uh, uh, when you set up the account with BitPay. Um, there, um, there's a contract that you sign to become their customer, and that um, I, I can't say for certain. That's actually a really good question. And um, so, yes, we would if there was some kind of a hack within the BitPay system. Is the state liable for choosing BitPay? That's um, I can't say for certain uh, what the answer to, is to that. But but contractually, uh, we would have to look at the language in there to to make sure that that there, that situation couldn't arise. Good question, though. Thank you. Questions? This obviously is going to go to a subcommittee for a lot of the answers. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, real, I realize it's a process that's going to take some work, and I have time, and we can work together, even if we have to move along. You know, it may take some time, but we can work together. <laughs> Totally written. <laughs> All right. Uh, do you have written testimony? I handed out a piece of paper um, with yeah. some answers there, and that's that explains more about uh, BitPay and, and it explains cryptocurrencies and, and so forth. And, and certainly, I'm available to answer any more questions. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Chair calls Dennis Gordon. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. My name is Dennis Goddard. I live in Hawkinton, and 
I've been an information technology manager for a quarter century. So that puts me well into dinosaur range, I think. Um, just a, a, a little brief bit of, of background. Back in uh, 1998, I had uh, recently graduated college, and at that time, the Mozilla Foundation, which had just created the first web browser, web browsers back then were things you could buy, um, open sourced their web browser and so anyone could get it and compile it. And I felt very smart because I could actually compile a web browser and get it to run. Uh, and at the time, a lot of us techies, we knew this was going to be huge. And when people asked us, how is it going to be huge, we'd say, I don't know. It's just so obvious it's going to be huge. And clearly we're in that point with, with blockchain. We, we, at the time, Amazon didn't exist, and Netflix didn't exist, Facebook didn't exist, maybe it was a better world. These sorts of things are coming. Um, the term being used these days is the internet of value, where we can send not just pictures of cats, but money across, across the internet. Um, another brief little anecdote. I, I had a little cable access TV show uh, here in Concord for a couple of years, around the same time that Bitcoin was becoming huge. Um, and I, frankly, was very skeptical on a, on a technical basis. Um, I guess they can't always call them. That's why I still have to work. And I had someone on to talk about Bitcoin. It was still fairly new, and I asked some questions, and we just chatted about the technicalities of Bitcoin for a bit. And this little cable access show, I used to put the shows up on the internet. It was before YouTube would let you put stuff like that up on, so I, there was a special little site I put my little cable access show up on, and usually I could see how many people watched my show, and it would be like five or ten. Fine. The show about Bitcoin, I swear to God, more than 20,000 people watched my stupid little show, and people from other countries contacted me and wanted to know if it would be okay if they rebroadcast my show in their country. Someone asked if they wouldn't mind if they translated it with subtitles into Portuguese. I said, sure. <laughs> so the people who are aficionados, who kind of like we were back in 1998, they see that this is going to be a big thing. They're not exactly sure yet how it's going to work out, but they're so enthused. They're likely to want to go ahead and pay the extra of one, five, ten percent to pay their taxes because then they can wear a little lapel sticker and say, I pay my taxes in Bitcoin and, and feel good about it. And, you know, maybe, maybe that's a good thing. Um, as far as the question of where, what's the value? Where does the value come from? Why? Uh, is a good one. Um, I periodically, is, is for work, uh, investment purposes, I do bank transfers. I, I go to Citizens Bank and I ask them to move a certain amount of money to some other bank, to another location. Uh, the bank transfer fee is typically 25, 30 bucks. It takes something like three days or a week to get to wherever I'm sending it. Um, there are cryptocurrency companies that are focusing primarily on interbank transfers that are now starting to gain um, regulatory approval. And those transfers cost on the order of one or two cents and take something like five seconds to transfer. So the benefit for businesses and uh, financial institutions is significant. They see a lot of value in being able to do that transfer with higher liquidity and, and more easily and more securely. Um, I would very much like to thank uh, Representative Roy for, for his question because in, in my notes I was going to make exactly that point. I mentioned I'm somewhat of a dinosaur. I remember when, credit, I'm so old, I remember credit cards were kind of new. It, it was a nifty thing. Telly Savalas used to have to get on TV and show us what a credit card was. Um, these days, when I pay the parking tickets that I do incur in the cities of Manchester and Concord, um, from my point of view, I'm paying with a credit card. I, I go to the city of Manchester's website and I put in my credit card and I've paid my parking ticket. The city of Manchester technically doesn't accept credit cards. They have a payment processor. Their website has a thing where you can put in a credit card. They get paid in real, whatever that is, money. So, so this is exactly the same sort of concept, right? A little thing you stick on your website and then if if breathless technical people want to pay you in weird internet money, 
that's fine. It's from your point of view, just money. Um, and I'll, I'll just end with reiterating that if we do this in New Hampshire, we won't be the first. Ohio started accepting um, cryptocurrencies through through third-party payment processors for taxes uh, back in November. Uh, the first payments started coming in. Um, there are all kinds of websites among those who are interested in this space that track what are the states that are furthest along. New Hampshire got a great boost just a couple of years ago when um, a study committee, and I, I forget exactly what year this happened, maybe it was 2016, um, made a recommendation that the, the following uh, session approved and became a law and was signed by the governor. Um, basically removing many of the regulations that would otherwise be in place for startup uh, blockchain companies. And instantly around the world, you started to see news stories in the news sites that follow crypto saying, oh, look at this, New Hampshire. And people started paying attention. And I, I know that uh, at least one crypto entrepreneur, I'm not a crypto entrepreneur, I'm boring, I work for a big company, um, behind me is, is going to talk a little bit more about that kind of thing. Um, what I can say is, it's still early enough that there are questions, but it's also early enough, it's not so early that we're the, we'd be the bleeding edge. Others have treaded before. But it is early enough where investors, companies, will look to New Hampshire and say, this is where the future is. I would love that to be the case. And it can be. Thank you. Question. Yes, thank you. Um, thank you for your testimony. Do you have some language that would better express what it is you all are trying to accomplish, since this is, as Representative Acton said, not current? I, I look forward to, uh, if there is a, sub, uh, a subcommittee uh, working with the subcommittee to try and find better language. I'm uh, proud of my ignorance of the law in many ways. I'm, I'm not good with, with writing legalese. It's not code. Uh, but I, I absolutely welcome any uh, amendments that the uh, committee could see fit to more appropriately match what the intention is. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Though. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, you had testified that, you know, a lot of people to get the badge would be willing to pay that one, five, ten percent. The Bitcoin, you, you had mentioned that it kind of is at the flat one percent. Is that a contract that does that fluctuate at any point within the contracts of somebody who is using Bitcoin as their processor? I actually don't know the ins and outs. I'm, I'm again not much of an entrepreneur in this space, just more of a technologist. Yep. I know I, I did a quick Googling before coming up here and saw like a dozen companies. BitPay is one of them. There's Square, Coinbase, a bunch of names that I don't really well know. My impression is that um, this is a new niche in a market that's opening up. I would imagine there's a lot of jostling for finding, you know, what are the parameters where different companies can compete to find um, the most profitable ways to serve one another. Thank you. We call next Jeremy Kaufman from Manchester. This is um, representing Governor Sununu. So um, I forget the exact act of legislation, but there's a governor appointed industry representative. I was originally appointed by Governor Hassan, and Governor Sununu uh, continued my appointment. Uh, so that dates back to HB 436 to, uh, to, to handle uh, crypto uh, acceptance for uh, regulating money transmitters and cryptocurrencies. Uh, and so it required uh, appointing an industry representative, and I was the appointee. Uh, so thank you um, uh, for, for having me here and uh, taking this testimony. Thank you for uh, considering this bill. Uh, so I do, uh, I, the reason that I was appointed as the industry representative is I am in the, in the industry. Uh, I run a company called LBRY. We are a blockchain-based uh, company. Uh, our headquarters is in, in Manchester, uh, New Hampshire. Uh, and we uh, employ about six people inside of the state uh, and about 20 people uh, internationally. Uh, so uh, I, there are a lot of good questions uh, about blockchain, Bitcoin, uh, how it works. 
if people want to ask those of me, uh, I'm happy to do my best to answer them. Uh, however, I would suggest that they are largely irrelevant to whether or not this is a, is a good bill or not. Uh, and uh, what I would suggest is that we can do a simple cost-benefit analysis uh, in terms of whether or not this is a, is a good bill for the state to consider. Um, I think the cost of this bill is very, very low. I think it carries basically uh, no risk for the state, and I think it is uh, very cheap to implement. Um, you're talking about a couple of days for a competent IT professional uh, to implement this. So I think the cost is very low. And I think the benefit, which some uh, other people have spoke about, including Representative Acton, is that it is a very positive signal to the industry that this is a state that is going to be um, progressive and at the leading edge of this cutting edge technology. Um, you can look at the positive coverage that came out of the passage of, of HB 436 last year. Uh, it got uh, main page coverage in cryptocurrency publications as well as major technical publications. It did very well on social media and these kinds of things. Uh, and so it is, it, it is a signal to the people who are working in this field that this is a good state to uh, come and do uh, business in. In terms of the uh, actual ways that this processing works, uh, I would also suggest that it is even better than credit cards. Um, credit card settlement frequently is you know, basically you're typically looking at several days to settlement. Uh, you're going to get cash here uh, within 24 hours. Uh, and, and I really want to emphasize that there is no liability to the state. The price of Bitcoin doesn't matter. Uh, if the exchange gets hacked or whatever, uh, that also doesn't matter. Uh, the, uh, and this is also very low risk. Um, there were some questions about uh, who was verifying these kinds of things. Uh, the state of New York does, uh, does license and regulate these institutions. Uh, so we have the ability to free ride on their work. BitPay is a licensed provider by the state of New York. Significant due diligence has been done on them by the state of New York. Uh, so this is not a kind of Wild West where there's no government oversight uh, of these companies. Um, I basically already talked, uh, so yeah, so it's extremely low cost. Again, I would suggest that it's profitable. Um, my business is going to pay a larger amount in taxes this year to the state of New Hampshire than it will cost the state of New Hampshire to, right, to implement this. Uh, so if you're getting a single other company to come here um, uh, through this kind of signal, uh, it is profitable uh, for the state. Uh, another thing that I was going to suggest to consider is, uh, you guys know this much better than I do, uh, but I'm going to guess it's not common to have 40 people uh, show up and testify in favor of paying their taxes. Uh, and that is what's happening here today. You have a large number of people who have come and said, I would like to pay the state money <laughs> uh, in this fashion. And that's probably a little bit of an uncommon thing. Uh, and so just consider what that means that there are that many people who are um, excited, uh, excited about doing this. Um, and in regards to that, you know, I, I, don't, I, I never want to discourage curiosity because I'm a very curious person uh, myself, but I really think a lot of these questions about why do people want to do this and the specifics of how blockchain works are, are really very relevant. People want to do it and there isn't liability to the state. Uh, you know, so I, you know, in my reasoning, if, if, if there was a, you know, a, a Beanie Baby exchange provider who said, we'll accept Beanie Babies and give the state cash, and a bunch of people showed up and said, we want to pay with Beanie Babies, you know, the state should consider that. Uh, it doesn't carry risk to the state, and, and it's profitable for the state, and people want it. Uh, that's sort of the function of government. Um, so if there's curiosity about Bitcoin, again, I am happy to answer questions, but I think that they're not that relevant to whether or not this bill should, should pass or not pass. Um, that's basically the extent of my uh, testimony. Uh, do people have any uh, questions for me? Questions? Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, if the Beanie Baby processor was to be chosen by the state, and then the person that was paying using their Beanie Babies thinks that we chose a processor that is evaluating it fairly, Right. So yes, I, I agree that the, the choice of provider is the um, is the biggest question here, and I, I think that you can pick one that is again you have as as someone else said you have ones that have already been selected by major uh, international companies like Microsoft that have been vetted by the state of New York and that are being used by the state of Ohio. Um, you know, risk always exists. Visa could technically fail. The banks could fail overnight. So to suggest that something is literally risk free is something I would pretty much never say. Um, but I think that this is very, very low risk to choose a provider like BitPay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, 
I know you didn't want to tell us, but I'm asking anyway. <laughs> no, please. What, if, if this is going to attract um, business to New Hampshire, I need to understand what is the upside to the business? Uh, what, what's the model behind it? Why would yeah, th this is um, perhaps a cynical answer, but it's optics. It shows that this is a state that's looking at these kinds of things and that is, is making a choice that is more progressive than other states are making. Um, you know, you can look again, if you want to look at, look at the coverage that Ohio got when they passed a similar bill. Um, in terms of, I, I don't, I'm not going to speculate on the actual numbers of people who would use this. My guess is that it's not going to be a massive amount, but it, it is low cost and it is positive optics that the state is, <coughs> at, is at the edge and at the frontier of this, this kind of thing. What I was more interested in is, is um, if, you, if you own a company, what's the upside for you to be able to transact in Bitcoin with the state versus just your bank account? Um, I don't know that we would. My company does not uh, hold most of its assets in United States dollars, and so we just take those and send them to the, to the state. We don't, as a company, hold Bitcoin. Uh, as an individual, uh, I do hold Bitcoin, and, and maybe I would choose to pay my taxes as an individual in Bitcoin. As a company, most likely we would continue to pay it out. Again, follow. Well, then how is it, how is it then that um, it would attract companies here if, if it, it it's it's just a positive sign. You know, you're gonna you you're gonna get you're gonna get press coverage that New Hampshire has passed the bill to accept cryptocurrencies, right? And so that's a sign that this is a state that's willing to. You know, there are other states that are, um, I, I I think, uh, much more regressive in how they look at these kinds of things. They they're fighting it rather than going along with it, and it's just a it's just a it's just a positive signal. Um, I'm not I'm not I don't intend to suggest that a bunch of companies are gonna flood here overnight uh, because we passed this bill, but I think it is a positive signal, and you know, these things have a cumulative effect. The more these kinds of things happen, the more, oh, New Hampshire is a good state uh, for, for Internet 3.0, for the Internet of Value, this is a good state to, to do bit, that kind of business in. And just a reminder, the painting against still have another card here, oh. and this is going to subcommittee. Uh, I would. I guess I will also uh, welcome. I apologize for not getting this out in a written form. Uh, but my email address is Jeremy. My first name J E R E M Y at L D R Y dot I O. Uh, you're welcome to contact me. I'm happy to talk at length with any of you individually or in a group um, to answer any questions you have about about the technology, the industry, and those kind of things. Thank you. Thank you. Chair calls. Have you decided on who the subcommittee will be? Yes, I am. I will tell you at the end of the hearing. I got one card left. Uh, Christopher Wake was down two minutes. All right, so uh, Christopher Wake from King, New Hampshire. Um, I am the CEO of Think Penguin Incorporated, and I can answer your question as to why, a bunch of your questions actually, um, and probably better than most of the people here, um, as to why a business would. Uh, want to accept cryptocurrencies and be able to pay in cryptocurrencies. Uh, basically, my business takes cryptocurrencies. We have since we have used BitPay as well. Uh, since 2011, basically since the company opened, we were one of the first customers actually. Um, they had less than 30 people at the time um, that we started using them. Um, basically, um, it's there's a lot of money to be saved when you're doing transactions, uh, especially with you know like everyday people. Um, there's about three percent of fees on credit cards. Pay credit cards, okay? And those fees don't exist with cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. Um, when we have a customer buy a computer from us from Germany, for example, and they pay in Bitcoin, our profits can literally double um, on, on our computer sales. So when we get those Bitcoins, now it used to be that we did exactly what this, what this bill is proposing, um, to use BitPay to convert those Bitcoins into US dollars. And this was in the early days. What had occurred to me at some point long ago was that it was better for me to take and take those Bitcoin, we're still using BitPay, but we're not converting to US dollars. We're taking those, that Bitcoin and we're basically just using BitPay to forward it to a wallet. And then we're using that to buy merchandise, buy stuff upstream. There's no fee then. There's not even a 1% fee at that point. So there, there might be a few pennies going on in the, in like the transactions, but we're talking about pennies, not you know a percentage of $1,000, for example, in a transaction. So from our, my perspective, I would love to be able to pay uh, my business taxes in Bitcoin, because it cuts out, uh, even if there's a 1% fee, it's still gonna be less than if I have to convert to, say, US dollars and then pay the state. 
because again, as, as it was said earlier, um, you know, it can be to convert, and I, I never convert anything really, um, but if I were to convert, it could be, you know, maybe eight, nine percent to do that. And obviously that just doesn't make any sense. Um, I also moved the business, actually, uh, my company, Think Penguin, from New Jersey to New Hampshire because of bills like this. It seems, it seems like, you know, trivial, but it, it actually makes a huge difference uh, for a variety of different reasons that a state is uh, on the forefront of, of change. And there's a lot of, um, we, we talk about Ohio, but Ohio is actually just uh, one of the states that's done it recently. There have been other countries that have also accepted cryptocurrencies, and they've actually been accepting it for quite a while. I believe, I think it's Monaco, but I might be mistaken. That might be a more recent one. Um, but they've been accepting cryptocurrencies as well. Um, so, and I know they're, I think they're, I believe that's the one in France, or near, they're not in France, they're, they're near France. It's very close relationship with France. Um, so I also want to point out that the US dollar isn't backed by anything we got off the gold standard a long time ago. Um, so security fears are not really relevant with cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin is not what gets hacked. Uh, cryptocurrencies are not really what gets hacked, generally speaking. It's the exchanges. Uh, Bit, BitPay is also not an exchange. Um, so that's also not really an issue. Um, banks also get hacked. North Korea stole, I think, billions of dollars, if I'm not mistaken, like just in the last year alone from actual banks. So whatever you know, trivial fears there are about that really are not existent. The cash is, when it's converted with BitPay, it does, it, they do it within 24 hours. So it's not like BitPay is actually holding any amount of money. Um, an exchange actually holds, like cryptocurrencies. BitPay doesn't hold that. Um, that would be another party. They're just, basically BitPay is just doing the exchange for you. Uh, the business or government. Um, so you got to think of Bitcoin. Uh, it's not no, it's not really anonymous. It's it's more like cash. Cash can also be tracked, but it's kind of like a little tricky. Um, yeah, Bitcoin's actually easier to track than cash. Um, let's see. Uh, so, so yeah, there's a huge economic cost. Um, obviously, the the state's not directly taking Bitcoin, and I think the bill itself actually clearly. Is, explains it, even though the title is a little confusing. I don't think there's really going to be any questions to implementation as it is already. Um, so also, um, as far as KYC is concerned, it's kind of like it's the same way with cash. It's really when it enters the banking system that KYC occurs. It's not really, it's not really something that is a concern with Bitcoin because all the points at which you would convert between Bitcoin and uh, uh, Bitcoin and dollars, there is some sort of in regulated intermediary not a bank, but still the same things. You gotta think about uh, cryptocurrency or the payment processing system um, like you do with Visa and MasterCard or PayPal. There is, they're not regulated, they're not FDIC. Um, I know PayPal isn't for sure. Um, and it's, it's the same thing, there's a risk. There is certain insurances uh, that companies can get. I don't know particularly if BitPay has what exactly insurance they have, but I don't think there's really a risk there anyway because it's, again, it's converted right away. It's not like they're holding it. Um, um, my business takes it because we get business from all over the world as a result um, of taking cryptocurrencies. Um, my company does not do, we're not a cryptocurrency business per se. We don't do anything with, like we have no interest in selling or buying Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies or anything of that. We don't have an exchange. We simply sell, my company is a tech company, we sell computers basically. Um, um, I know employees who have been paid in Bitcoin. Um, there are, somebody asked a question about different payment processors. There's a bunch of them, hey, coinpayments.net. AnyPay is another one that's actually based out in New Hampshire. Um, obviously, there's BitPay. Uh, so yeah, we'll just, we'll just yeah, so there's yeah, there's there's basically a zero there's a zero cost to the state um, um, as far as implementation because really what they're, we're talking about is adding tiny links to the payment site. So so the state itself doesn't actually have to do anything other than add a link to its own like web pages, which is something that. I implemented my, my site and get it actually integrated with BitPay years ago, and it took me five minutes um, to integrate. And we had a much more complicated system because we have a shopping cart and everything with our site. As opposed to the state, that doesn't, that's not an issue for the state. So it's just really, a, literally a, a tech person. It won't even take, it'll take 30 seconds to add a link. Um, so cost, implementation costs is, is not really, there isn't really one. Yeah, and that's, that's it. If anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to ask, answer them. Questions. Thank you. I'm going to recess this hearing. I have one more card. I'm going to recess so that I can 
open up the hearing that we're running behind on on House Bill 570. I will reopen the public hearing on 470 and call Ian Freeman. Good Thank morning. you for your patience. Oh, no problem. Thank you for having me. I'm uh, one of the ambassadors at the uh, Bitcoin Embassy that's located in New Hampshire. It's actually located in Keene, the first one uh, in North America, in the New England area of North America. There's another Bitcoin Embassy in Atlanta. Uh, there are other Bitcoin embassies elsewhere in the world. Um, I wanted to address a couple of things that were brought up here, and I'll try to keep it short. Um, the, one of the reasons why somebody might want to pay with Bitcoin uh, to as far as state taxes are concerned. A lot of state agencies will accept credit cards um, for convenience sake, right? Because somebody just, maybe they don't want to write a check or for whatever reason they want to put it on their card. Usually the state agency will then add in a 3% fee uh, on top of a credit card transaction because usually that's about what uh, the credit card company is going to charge is the 3%. So they add that on top of whatever the taxable amount is they're collecting. And so 1% is a lot better than 3%. And so that's one of the reasons why a lot of people want to pay with cryptocurrency in a variety of different areas, not just to the state, but uh, elsewhere. And so that's a big deal. Also, New Hampshire, as was mentioned earlier, does have very high interest, as far as the people of New Hampshire, in cryptocurrency and Bitcoin specifically. Uh, there was a company called Overstock, or some of you probably have heard of them. They were the first billion dollar company to begin accepting Bitcoin, and this was, I think, maybe four or five years ago now. Um, that company, when they started accepting Bitcoin, the CEO there, the founder, is very interested in uh, Bitcoin, and he started to study the usage of cryptocurrency by their customers. Who's using this, you know, this thing to pay with? And it actually turned out that New Hampshire had the highest per capita use as far as the customers at Overstock.com. I don't remember what year that was for, but I do remember seeing the, the chart and the details on that. So there's a high interest in uh, cryptocurrency and Bitcoin here in New Hampshire. And you can actually see this for yourself by going to a website that shows a map where you can see a lot of New Hampshire businesses that have started accepting Bitcoin at their point of sale. So um, I live in Keene. Keene is one of the hot spots. Portsmouth and Keene are two of the probably most um, you know, biggest areas in New Hampshire where real mom and pop local businesses are accepting Bitcoin. Um, I'm going to go to a dentist next month that is, accepts Bitcoin in Keene. Uh, there's an auto repair shop that I take my car to that takes cryptocurrency. Um, there's multiple <coughs> sit down and food truck style restaurants in Keene that accept cryptocurrency. There's a bar uh, that takes cryptocurrency. And that's just in Keene. There's a bunch more out in Portsmouth. There's some in Manchester. I think there's maybe one or two here in, here in Concord. But I would like to invite you to you know, jot this one down, coinmap.org. The website is coinmap, C-O-I-N-M-A-P, coinmap.org. It just shows you, the, it shows you the whole globe, actually. And you zoom right in on New Hampshire, and you'll be able to kind of get a, a feel for what businesses are accepting it. They're all mom and pops. There's no you know, mega corporate chains that are, that are doing it yet. But as was mentioned, some of these uh, Microsofts and uh, you know, Wikipedias, these mega companies on the internet are definitely taking uh, Bitcoin in real life. So it's, it's big here in New Hampshire. Um, Jeremy testified earlier about his company moving here and, and basing here in New Hampshire. And his isn't the only one. There was that good news that came out a couple of years ago when uh, New Hampshire, I think it was 2017, or 2016. Anyway, they passed a bill that kind of deregulated uh, Bitcoin from the money transmitter regulations here. It basically said that if you are running a business and you just do Bitcoin to other cryptocurrency trades, not Bitcoin to dollars, but you can exchange Bitcoin to the other ones. There's a bunch of competitors to Bitcoin. Um, but that wouldn't be considered money transmission. And there were some businesses that saw that news. They saw the headlines in the Bitcoin trades, and they actually came here. And I'll just tell you about one of them. Uh, it's called AnyPay. It's based in Portsmouth. So if you were to go to one of these businesses in Keene or Portsmouth and that accepts cryptocurrency, the way they're accepting it is through this company, AnyPay. And it's a point of sale software that allows a, uh, you know, the, the cashier to type in the amount of the sale, and then they can collect that very easily from their customer. That software that was developed here in New Hampshire by a brand new company and the founder of that company said it was the Bitcoin news about New Hampshire that he saw that made him want to found this company and run it from Portsmouth. 
So there's definitely some companies we can point to that exist here in New Hampshire now uh, that may not have existed at all if it weren't for New Hampshire's friendliness to Bitcoin. And so this bill takes that to the next step. It takes that to the next level. It'll be great press, great publicity for operating a business here in New Hampshire, and I fully support it. So happy to answer any questions. Like I said, I'm with the Bitcoin Embassy, so I know a thing or two about it. Questions? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, so you probably heard my, my concerns and my questions about, you know, we're selecting the processor and that the assumed risk is on the processor and the payer of the taxes. If there was, you know, I'm just thinking, if would it be viable if on the website we have that little link, pay by Bitcoin, say if there was a screen or something that was able to just alleviate that and rather than just being an implied risk, say, I accept that this processor is the chosen by the state and absent any, you know. Yeah, if something goes wrong, I'll still be, you know, responsible. You could totally yeah, put that in the agreement. Yeah, if it was just one screen, they could just check off and sure. electronically sign before they paid it. Yep, totally easy. When we look at the banking industry, which I think is comparable, we talk about creating assets. <coughs> There's a process the bank has to go through to be verified to become a bank. And they get regulated by and overseen by the U.S. government. What's the process of the cyber currency for establishing one, and who oversees it? The marketplace oversees cryptocurrency through competition. Um, anybody can go out and create a cryptocurrency. In fact, uh, we just celebrated the 10th anniversary of Bitcoin just a few weeks ago, and we don't even know who its creator was. Uh, his or her name is Satoshi Nakamoto. It's not their real name. Um, and since then, that person has disappeared from any kind of uh, public view. But the key is, what Satoshi did was created software that's what they call open source. Now, for those that may or may not be familiar, open source means you can read the code. So I'm not a programmer. I wouldn't know what I was looking at. But you know, there's some people who obviously do know what they're doing when it comes to programming. And they have vetted this code for years. It is clearly, there's no back doors. There's no you know, scanning things going on. It's not hackable. It's cryptographically secure. And we know this because there's a great you know, monetary reward, if you could hack Bitcoin, I mean, it would be an incredible windfall of profits. <laughs> and it just hasn't happened because it can't be done. It's uh, the math, it's very, very secure and it's very, very sound. So basically it's being audited constantly um, by the community, essentially. It's sort of a crowdsourced regulation, if you will. If there was something wrong with it, then they could just move to one of its competitors. And there are thousands of competitors to Bitcoin. And the reason why they exist is because they took that Bitcoin code, which is open, and they tweaked things about it. And they said, well, we think this is better, and we're going to market this other competing currency. Now, no one has ever unseated Bitcoin from you know, the top of the heap. And we don't see that happening, I don't think, anytime soon. Anything else? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else we should testify on House Bill 470? Seeing that, I'll the public hearing and the subcommittee. Representative Prue, because you said you were going to get all your questions answered. I <laughs> brought all of them answered. Right. Wire, Roy, and Fox. Who's the second one? Yeah. Gotta give you all the time you need to get those questions. Yeah. Who's the second I have them all answered. Uh, Rhoda? Definite pattern between question asked and second question. It's going to discourage you from asking questions. We'd like to invite you to visit freekeen.com. Freekeen.com features audio, video, and blogs chronicling the transition to a voluntary society. Freekeen.com also has comments and discussion forums so you can be heard. Freekeen.com. I should be in Keene, New Hampshire with the Free Staters.